believe me, making a good souls like game into D is no joke. Sometimes it's even harder than full blown 3D. I know that's a bold claim, but I will try to explain it. Plus, we will see if Skeletron, the Chronicles of Arikona, is worth your time and money or just another game to pass on. Oh, and my voice can sound a little bit off signs I'm starting to getting sick. In case you missed the title, description or intro, Skeletron is a souls like Metroidvania, meaning it pulls mechanics from both genres and smashes them together. It's weird though, despite all our advances in gaming, we still haven't separated souls like into its own genre. Some people even compare Skeletron to Blasphemous, probably because both are dark, twisted Metroidvanias with some ugly and scary enemies with a grim atmosphere. But where Blasphemous dives into religious symbolism with a super bizarre vibe, Skeletron sticks to the classic dark fantasy without the surreal cryptness. The devs clearly idolize Dark Souls right down to the minimal story. Yeah, there is a plot, but the game only shows you a piece of it and much later on you will encounter a character who knows everything your story, where you are there, the whole deal, but he's told it all to the other versions of you so many times that he's sick of it and just refuses. Amazing! You play as Derek Arikona, a lord destined for death by treachery, who avoided it in the favor of a more grim fate. Not that the game tells you that, no. I had to get that from the Steam page. Or you can try free prologue Khaled Skeletron The Prey. Anyways, the game starts with an old hunter whistling, hoping his friend will come to help him fend off a swarm of mutated rats. You jump in to help, and then he asks you to find his son and other comrades, or at least what's left of them. Lacking another clue, it's as good a quest as any. As you go, you will learn that the world is filled with monsters, apparently things went south when the old ruler died, and the queen took over putting her full focus on some war against who knows what. But the real story unfolds as you play. You are one of the reasons things started happening after all. In any souls like especially 2D, gameplay is everything. It's what keeps you coming back for more punishment. These games are hard, 80% are tough and the other 20% purely for masochists like me. Which I guess makes me a masochist. You start in a forgotten battlefield as a skeleton with a rusty sword barely holding on. As in any souls like you keep progressing through brutal challenges. The world is half open, letting you explore different roads but at some point you will be forced to face down a boss to proceed. Like a true metroidvania, defeating most bosses rewards you with new abilities necessary to progress deeper into this twist that word. And of course there are hidden rooms and secrets all over the map. Some are clever, others feel like, hey, let's just hide this shark behind a random pillar. Quick stuff. <laughs> if you are into indie games and want to discover hidden gems, consider subscribing. I cover lesser known games that might just become your next favorite one. I'll write back to the video. Through battles you will earn essence, both as experience and currency. You can level up at fireplace allowing you to customize your build, if something like this matters here. There are also shards hidden around the world that you can spend on upgrades in the knowledge tab. And for every 5 shards you find you get an extra healing item, so you'll be hunting for these like easter eggs. You've got three types of weapon, one-handed, two-handed and secondary. One-handed weapons like swords and dagger are quick, but two-handers, surprise, feel like better balance here. And yeah, I usually go for the faster one-handed playstyle, but midway through Skeletron I switch it to two-handed and they just work better. Some weapons are come with special moves like a two-handed sword with an extra jump attack, if you have enough Ether, the game's version of magic energy. You can boost Ether to help with bosses, as these special moves are often your best friend for serious damage output. There is also the trusty parry move for fans of Sekiro. It requires equipping a shield for that. If you can time it right, it staggers an enemy for a few seconds, though personally I'm not the best at it. Rolling and sidestepping are here too, but they share the same button, which yeah, sometimes means my character sidestep when I meant to roll, and it usually costs me a hit or a life. Enemies vary in difficulty with some easily exploited weakness and others that will crash you no matter how careful you are. Bosses? Well, bosses in Skeletron will eat you alive. You can choose an easier mode at the start, but hey, I am a masochist. Anyways, the game is unbalanced in its difficulty, because sometimes game can be really easy where in the next room you will gonna start creating new slurs expressing your rage. Souls like are tough to nail. You need near instant responsiveness, a balanced difficulty curve, a bit of mastery and challenging but fair bosses. In 3D you have room to move left and right giving players more options in dodging attacks or more space for his actions. In 2D not so much. And if a 2D souls like demands pixel perfect moves, both for avoiding attacks like also performing them, brace yourself. But a good 2D souls like makes combat fun, despite the constraints. Skeletron is somewhere on the fine line between being good and well, being too brutal and frustrating. 
It's frequently hops between the two, as you will see in my final opinion. I played Skeletron several times, and despite patches, the game still has plenty of bugs. Developers are actively fixing issues, but even in version 1.4, some serious problems remain. Early players must have faced a bug filled experience, and it's surprising that was launched as version 1.0. The game also feels unnecessarily difficult. Many enemies need numerous hits to be taken down, and if you lack top tier weapons or max level of strength, battle can feel like a grind. Combat is also challenging because flying enemies can change their attack path to follow you, making them exhausting to fight, especially in tight spaces with other foes. Plus, ranged enemies often spam attacks and see to know your exact location, which feels unfair. The biggest issue I encountered was a bug preventing me from receiving the double jump ability after the first bot. The glitch forced me to restart after hours of progress and starting from zero, as I couldn't access area requiring double jump. I discovered this after looking where I should go on YouTube, as I lost all ideas in some point. Eventually found a workaround for lost progress using another glitch I discovered while leveling up, but it's frustrating to see such issues. In the release version and after few patches, for f sake. The audio is sparse, enemy screams, air attacks and background sounds there are few soundtracks in spot like The Village, but honestly, they are forgettable. That's why also I forget about them. <laughs> Art-wise, it's an interesting pixel art mix. Characters are fully pixelated, while some enemies look more like pixelated real-life photos. I appreciate the attempt to stand out, even if it's not everyone's cap of tea. The game's color palette lends dark but still finds room for variety. There is also a faint white outline around your character which is nice touch to help separate you from the background. Enemies also got this outline once they are focused on you. Skeletron is painful. It's good but has summarized flaws. Difficulty spikes from manageable to absurd and some boss fights are just unfair. The judge, for example, was pure torture with her pixel perfect hits and second phase with changing arena as she spams attack after attack. After finally beating her, I didn't feel victorious. I felt relieved, with hope that I will never gonna fight her again. Unbalanced difficulty, glitches and the frustration of roles sometimes turning into sidesteps makes Skeletron a mixed bag. Yes, the devs are fixing things, but game-breaking bugs should not have made into version 1.0 and surely not any patch later. All said and done. Though, Skeletron is still fun. I lost hours to this game and wanted to keep playing, not just for review purposes, but because it was entertaining for me. The Souls-like and Metroidvania mix is genuinely executed kinda good. Finding easter eggs referencing Castlevania or Dark Souls was a nice touch. Some bosses I could handle in a few tricks, and even one I beat on the second attempt, so there were moments when I felt skilled and accomplished. In the end, I recommend Skeletron The Chronicles of Arikona, but if you are a hardcore Souls like fan, if you are more of casual or Metroidvania fan, you might escape this. Puzzles are minimal and most of the challenge is in the fighting. If you love that Souls like grind though, this might be for you. Or if you are a masochist. <laughs> if you want to check out the game yourself, there is a link in the description. And if you love discovering new indie games, hit that subscribe button so you don't gonna miss my next review. See you next time, bye.